Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome back to Southwest Victory Gardens. My name is Brandon. On this channel, we talk all about backyard gardening and desert climates. So thanks for checking it out, really appreciate it. Want to talk a little bit about tree pruning today. Um, it's January, uh, it's mid-January, uh, and right now, if you look behind us, you'll see our fig trees, our pomegranates, our membrillo, um, all of our um, deciduous fruit trees are dormant. Uh, this time of year and right now is really the best time of year to uh, prune these trees um, regardless of the type of tree if it's a deciduous fruit tree uh, now is really a, a great time of year to prune it because when the trees are dormant um, they take the prunings easier and we can really see the shapes of the trees a lot better than when they're fully leafed out and have a full canopy so um, so this is really honestly the best time of year to do it the other good reason we want to prune these trees right now is because they're they're just getting ready to put out new leaves here you know in the next few weeks uh, a lot of these trees as, as temps warm up we're going to start to put out their new leaves um, but before they do that we want to try and take as many cuttings from these trees as possible we can take cuttings from these trees root them out over the spring and summer and by this fall we'll have fruit trees ready to go out into the garden that will be fully rooted out so it just takes you know uh, a, a few short months to take these cuttings, root them out, and we'll have brand new fruit trees that then we can, you know, either plant in our gardens, give to our neighbors, or distribute out in our communities in other ways. So, um, so today what I want to do is sort of show you the basics of, tr of, of tree pruning. Um, I'm going to do three trees today. We're going to do fig, a pomegranate, and a membrillo, or a, a quince tree. These three trees all take prunings very well, and you, uh, all of them are essentially gonna be pruned in a very similar shape, so uh, it's, these are good examples. Um, other uh, deciduous fruit trees, things like apples, peaches, pears, you wanna be a little bit um, more careful about pruning some of those trees because um, you know, depending on the variety, those trees can produce uh, fruit on, on, on year old wood or, or this year's wood. And so when, when you're pruning uh, those types of trees, you wanna be a little bit more careful, less about shape and more about look, looking at specific branches um, while still being mindful of shape, of course. These trees are pretty much, you know, we can trim just for shape. We don't have to really um, pay too much attention to which branches, you know, uh, we're cutting as far as like, are they woody branches? Are they this year's branches, last year's branches, that sort of thing. Um, so they're a little bit easier to prune. Um, basically, when we're doing a pruning like this, any type of pruning, whether it's native trees, it's deciduous fruit trees or exotics, you know, um, we want to be pretty careful about what we're, what we're cutting. Um, we don't just want to go in there and just randomly cut, you know, we want to be very careful, very specific about what we're doing and always have a plan, you know, a vision. Sometimes it helps just to, you know, cut a few branches and take a walk back uh, and look at the tree from different angles and see, okay, uh, I like it, how it's looking or no, I don't want to do any more to it. Um, usually I don't want to take any more than say 25% of any tree at one time. So you still got to be mindful of that kind of thing. And always, you know, I always tell people the four D's, the four D's of tree pruning are uh, anything that's dead, dying, or diseased, right? Those can be pruned out at any time. Um, so if you have a dead branch or a dying branch, something with, uh, you know, oozing out of it, you know, you can cut that and prune that at really any time. And, and that's always going to be recommended. The fourth D, uh, there's a motorcycle driving by, so, <laughs> so it's a Mustang. Um, the fourth D, excuse me, is going to be uh, any branches that are deranged, right? So these are branches that are crossing, um, that might be growing like into a walkway, um, growing up into the tree, you know. These are, are branches that are structurally unsound, right? So, so these can also be pruned out. And this, these are also the branches that we can cut out if we want to sort of form a shape to our tree. Um, you can see behind me this fig. Uh, is a little, you know, out of control and overgrown. It's been quite a while. We got, you know, native milkweed vine growing all over it. So what I want to do is just sort of shape this tree up and give it a, a, a new nice shape. And whenever I'm thinking of, of these fruit trees, I want to think of sort of like a goblet shape, like uh, uh, from the ground up. I want to try to have, you know, anywhere between say five to seven or eight main branches that are coming out from the center uh, and they're all coming out in different directions, you know, so I'm thinking of like a goblet shape and that's sort of the, the main shape that I want to uh, prune this tree to. Um, and so I'm going to do a few cuts, take a step back, see where I'm at with it and then go from there. But that ultimately is the shape I want. So I'm going to be using three tools today. Uh, I have uh, just a handsaw. 
um, that you know that works really well at taking out some of the larger branches you know anything that's really woody this is, is going to be super helpful for that uh, i have my two foot loppers um, these are uh, great at, at getting larger branches and also getting into the tree um, that you know where you can't reach right because these are two feet they can really you know they can really get deep into some of those canopies so they're really helpful for that and obviously i'm going to have just my hand uh, pruners as well so my felcos um, do most of my cutting with these, but I'll also be using, you know, the, the large two foot pruners when I need them. And if I have to, I'll pull the saw out to cut some of the bigger branches. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just prune this up. I'll let it keep recording and you can kind of see at the end, we'll take a picture of the shape and then we'll move on to our other trees and show you how those are pruned up. All right. So let's go ahead and take care of this one. All right, so let's go take a look at this, see what, how we've done here. So you can see we've really opened up this tree quite a bit. Um, you know, anything growing up into the middle of the tree uh, is really, you know, you want to get that out of there. You want to open up the middle of the tree uh, and try to get these branches growing out from the base of the tree in all different directions. So you can see we're coming out in all different directions. Um, this main branch here in the center, this tree wasn't pruned very well from the beginning. And so this main branch is just sort of like, it's not a good shape. And honestly, I think over time we're going to try to uh, eventually remove that because, you know, it's really structurally unsound. But for now, it, it's, it's, it's supporting two larger branches that are going to produce fruit. And so once these other um, uh, branches growing in this direction get a little bit bigger, we can, we can take that center one out of there. Um, but basically we've just opened up the whole tree and you can see from all different directions here now um, so we have our pile of cuttings here this we're gonna uh, show you what to do with in another video but basically we can take these branches now and take sections of them put them in a uh, rooting mix and give them a little bit of rooting hormone and we'll be able to make some cuttings we'll be able to make new fig trees out of those cuttings right there so don't throw those away you know we're gonna we're gonna reuse those so all right so this is the fig I think this is a green cadota um, these figs are amazing man I love this I love Arizona <laughs> all right so um, we're gonna go ahead and move over to a pomegranate tree now pomegranate tree doesn't need too much pruning um, but still same thing we'll let you look at it and then we'll, we'll show you how we prune it up all right see you in a second all right, so here is our pomegranate tree. You can see also it's a little uh, overgrown. So with this, um, one thing that's especially important with the pomegranates, what we really want to look for are these, these uh, really, you know, aggressive shoots that start to form in the middle of the tree. So if I can zoom in a little bit here, you can see these really thin branches that shoot straight up through the tree 
right? Those aggressive shoots right there. You can even see that they're, the wood is a little bit of a different color. It's a little bit of a lighter color, right? And so all of those we're gonna wanna remove and come out because those really don't produce fruit uh, and they just take up a lot of space up in the center of the tree, right? Oops, sorry about that. So, so we're gonna take all of those out most certainly. And then we're also going to try and, again, adjust some of the shape of this tree if we can. So one of the things about this tree that I do not like is that we have this really this main branch right here in the center of the tree. If you can see that, that one right in the center. And it goes straight up into the tree canopy, like just straight up. And because it's the probably the largest branch of the tree and it's got a lot of fruit producing branches, you know, I'm not going to remove it. But I much prefer these other branches here that are growing out from the center, right? See these four other branches here? Um, that's sort of the shape that we want. So if we can encourage our pomegranates or our figs or membrillo or whatever to take that shape, that goblet shape from the start, um, that's going to just make our trees produce better over time. So you can see all down there, those little tiny little shoots that grow straight up. We're going to cut all of those out. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll put this back on the mount on the tripod and we'll prune this up for you and you can get a good look of what this one's going to look like. This one should go pretty quick because there's not too much to go off of this one. So there's this pomegranate. My phone died partially the way through there, so I had to recharge it. The power's out in the building, so I had to plug it into my DeWalt Bluetooth radio. So that was fun. Anyways, here we are. Here's our pomegranate. You see we opened it up on the inside. We took out all of those advantageous branches that were in there. Uh, you know, we, we gave it its nice goblet like shape as, as best as we could so yeah it's nice and cleaned up there um let me show you one thing on this side of the tree right here let's see if we can see we i'm i let the branches on this side grow out a little more i left them a little more full um and the reason i did that is because this the, the branches that are going that way facing in that direction right there that's basically south, southwest, right? And so um, letting your deciduous fruit trees like really get a lot thicker on the south, southwest side is really gonna help your trees out a lot because it creates like a natural sunscreen in the afternoon, right? You know, the, the sun is gonna be really intense on that south side, uh, southwestern side. And you know, the late afternoon, anytime after like two o'clock, you know, that summer sun is just super intense. So if you can, you know, let your uh, deciduous fruit trees or any of your fruit trees really get really thick or a lot bushier on that side, it's going to let the, it's going to basically create a natural sunscreen. Now we didn't do that too much on the fig over there because the fig already has, um, uh, there's a couple trees growing on the southwest side of that fig. So we pruned that one up a little more than we did here. So, you know. Uh, the reason we did that is because there's already like a natural sunscreen from that other tree. But since this uh, this tree doesn't have anything over here to protect it, um, it does have this mesquite behind it. 
Um, but what I actually think I might move this tree. So when I move this tree and I replant it, I want to make sure I keep that same orientation, right? So I, I want to have these branches still facing south, southwest when I replant it. So it's still a, a good thing uh, to do. All right, so I'm not sure if I'm going to get to that membrillo today. I'm going to go look at it and see how much work it needs to be done. But with my camera, you know, on low battery and I'm not able to charge it, uh, I might just have to come back, you know, and, and do that at a different time for you guys. So, uh, but at the very least, you see the pomegranate and the fig, uh, and then that can kind of give you just a basic idea. So, um, let's go ahead and take a look at that membrillo and see what we're dealing with. And then at least we can, you know, take a look whether or not I do the time lapse, I'm not sure. So let's go take a look at that membrillo. All right, so here we have our quince or membrillo as it's locally known. Another one of our awesome deciduous fruit trees that have super low chill hours and you can basically grow in any part in the low desert. Ugh, you're gonna see this tree hasn't been pruned in over five years, probably longer than that. It's completely overgrown with milkweed vine. And the butterflies love it and this tree produces pretty good, but we're gonna get, get down in there and really clean it up. You can see even like down underneath in the in the duff there, that leaf uh, litter, that new trees are coming up and sprouting out underneath it. Um, we got a little bit of a weed problem. There's some Bermuda in there. And so this whole tree just really needs to get cleaned up. And so this one's gonna take a lot longer. Um, we're gonna uh, basically apply the same technique that we did on the fig and on the pomegranate. So you'll kind of get an idea, you know, but, um, But, um, you know, it's going to take a lot longer than those other two trees. So rather than doing a time lapse, we'll just sort of do a before and after kind of a thing here. So I'm going to go ahead, get my pruners and my saw and go to work on this thing. Whether or not I finish it today, I'm not sure. I got a few other things I need to do today. Um, but we'll at least start the process and then show you the finished result uh, once that's all done. So we'll show you. We'll, we'll, so we'll prune this up. So we'll prune this up, make it look real nice, clean up all the weeds, take out anything that's invasive, uh, and just get this tree looking real nice. And we're gonna save the uh, trimmings from this tree just like we did from the pomegranate and the fig. We can take cuttings from this tree uh, and reproduce them over the spring and summer and have brand new membrillo trees next fall. So we're gonna go ahead and do that as well. So, um, all right, I'm gonna show you what this looked like after I do all the pruning, get it all cleaned up, and, uh, and that'll be it. All right, welcome back. Here we go. Camera cut off there, and then I got a little bit busy, so it's about a month later, to be all honest with y'all. Um, we've had a freeze, so some of our plants have, have died. So it's been been a nice little month here. Um, yeah, but real quick, uh, so just want to show you the finished product. Ended up taking out a lot more out of this tree than I normally would like to take in a uh, single pruning. Um, probably upwards of maybe 30 or 40 percent or 35 percent of the um, there was a lot of dead wood at the bottom uh, in that area that I ended up taking out some real big pieces that were mostly dead um, really woody and just really mangled so um, I ended up leaving in a lot of the you know more thinner branches so it's still a lot th uh, thicker and at the top uh, than I would normally leave it I'd, I would like to open it up just a little bit more but because we took so much of the, those big branches out, I wanna give this tree at least one or two seasons possibly to, to recover. And then we can go in and really get a, a nice final shape there. So I just wanted to give you uh, uh, an idea of what this looks like. Um, though, you know, because you may have to, uh, you may move in, maybe move into a house and there's a tree that, you know, hasn't been pruned in a long time and, and you want to, you know, give it some good shape. So that's, that's pretty common actually. I get a lot of clients um, that, that uh, buy houses with old fruit trees. So, um, so yeah, again, look at that, that shape from coming up from the bottom. It's like a vase, right? It, it's like a chalice. It comes up from the bottom and spreads outward. And that shape really just does well with, with these uh, three particular trees. Um, if you want to see some good examples of these trees, I really recommend um, taking a trip over to uh, Mission Garden over on Mission Road. It's really, it's at the base of a mountain. And 
Uh, you can, uh, there, there's a lot of mature uh, pomegranates, membrillo or quince uh, and, and figs, and they have a lot of other uh, really cool fruit trees that they're growing there. And you can get some really good ideas of how to how to prune these up and what shape they should take. But that, that that's what uh, a good example of a mature orchard um, that that looks pretty uh, um, or that that is pretty well maintained. So I do recommend that. Um, all right. Well, if you all have any questions, um, there goes another motorcycle. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, please you know leave some comments uh, down below. Um, I'm happy to uh, you know answer any of those that you might have. Um, since it's been a while, uh, we already did all the cuttings that I was going to do um, of these particular trees. Um, and I have those in the greenhouse right now. They're all growing out. So if I can, I might uh, do uh, a video on that, but we'll see how uh, how my schedule goes. I'd like to just do a quick one, but you know, we'll see. There are a bunch of videos on cuttings already, so you guys can check those out. So, all right. So I uh, appreciate y'all checking out this video. Um, these are these three particular trees are some of the easiest to grow in Tucson. So if you want a, a easy to grow fruit tree, I really recommend either a fig, um, pomegranate, or membrillo uh, or quince tree. Uh, they all grow really well. They they all handle the cold weather really well, and they all will produce like really easily with with very little water. So all right, I'm gonna take that back. They do need a lot of water, uh, but uh, they do still produce in our heat. So all right, folks, uh, y'all take care, and I hope to see you in the next video. And uh, thanks for checking it out. I really appreciate it. Take care, y'all. Bye.